I want to demystify furniture design today. So let's go. First and foremost, yes, I'm still in LA. So we are going to work around what's happening out here. But folks were rather upset last week that there was no coffee situation, no face mug to be had. So I remedied that situation. Now, yeah, you maybe got into a few illicit substances, but we're not gonna have a conversation about that because this is a family channel. Regardless, my friend, Mike Coffee, a tremendous furniture maker out here in the state of California, makes these mugs, coffee with coffee, but let's be real. It should be coffee with Curtis. That's where we're at. This is the standard mug for the time being. Now, let's talk about design. The design process can be intimidating. It can be kind of mysticized a little bit and off-putting to some folks. And I wanna demystify that because it really is a series of steps of problem solving. If you saw my last video, you know that I'm out here staying with my friend Christy and we are renovating her bathroom. And I was sitting on the pot the other day doing the dirty and I was trying to decide what it needed. We've talked about potential tables, we've talked about a cabinet, we've talked about floating shelves, we have options, but I needed to sit with it for a little while to figure out exactly what it's missing. Last time we made some shelves in a mirror out of some reclaimed live edge timbers and now we're going to do some shelves and or a cabinet around the sink vanity. Now, while Christy isn't technically a client in that she's not paying me to do this work, the process that I'm about to go through with you in real time is very much the same process that I would do with a client. And I wanna be as transparent as I can in this process so that you guys feel less intimidated when designing your next piece of furniture. So without any further ado, let's talk about the design process. Now, step one is very straightforward and if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times on this channel. Define your limitations. And that could mean any number of things. That could be a conversation with a client defining materials. It could be defining size. It could be defining what the shape is, right? So if a client is hiring you to make a table, your table's not gonna look like a chair. So that is a hard limitation that you have. So in this instance, as I've said, Christy has kind of given me carte blanche to play, but that doesn't mean there's no limitations, right? We have a budgetary limitation in that I'm not going to spend $2,000 on material for a tiny bathroom vanity in a guest bathroom. And the second one is I have hard dimensional limitations, right? There is a 46 and a half inch wall in which this cabinet needs to fit. I've got a weird kind of 30-ish degree angle kicking out on one side, and I've got a 90 degree wall that has a bow in it on the other side. So I need to account for the physical space. And I've already done that, by pulling my dimensions here. I don't know if you can read that at all, but I just pulled my dimensions, wrote it down on a scrap piece of trim that was lying around, and now I know roughly where my piece needs to fit. Now this is, again, kind of backyard woodworking, but a little bit higher than the shelf mirror project. Which brings us to our third and most important limitation, in this case, is the tooling. What tooling do I have to be able to make an object for this space? If I design this crazy, curved, organic, beautiful object, and then I don't have the tooling to create it, well, I've just shot myself in the foot. There's no way I can actually fabricate that. So as I'm going through this design process, I'm keeping in mind what tooling I have available to me in Christie's shed so that I can actually make the thing a reality. So with our hard limitations in place, the next step is visual research. My favorite way to do this is libraries, books, the old school way, because those tend to be more isolated from the influence of social media. I've talked about the echo chamber of social media before. I'm not going to harp on it again, nor am I going to rip on it because it does have its value. However, what tends to happen if you only ever look on social media for visual inspiration is that you create the things that everybody else is creating, which again, there's nothing wrong with that if you're just doing it as a hobby, if you're doing it for fun. But if you're doing it as a professional or a semi-professional or just as an amateur who wants to continue to get better and advance their skill set, learning how to create your own works is an important step. But in lieu of having books and libraries available to me in my current location, we're going to go to my second favorite place to go, which is Pinterest. And yes, Pinterest is still social media, and yes, Pinterest is kind of overloaded with very basic things, but there are interesting things on it, and it's easier to search for them on a platform like Pinterest than it is on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, etc. So let's dive in. 
So the first thing I'm going to do when I get to this website is go up to the search bar and start punching in keywords that have something to do with what I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm just going to go with bathroom cabinet. Let's see what comes up. I scroll through a little bit till I see anything that kind of strikes my fancy that is roughly what I'm looking for. I don't even know what I'm looking for right now. That's doing nothing for me. That's just giving me super basic stuff. I don't like this so far, but I'm gonna give it another second. What? Uh, this is kind of interesting. I'm not doing a built-in, but I don't hate that visually. I don't like any of these. So let's go back to the top. I'm gonna go bathroom shelves. Still nothing very interesting. It's just boring, just boring stuff. All right, how can I refine this search a little bit? How can I make this more specific to bring up some more interesting things? This is not the idea for this bathroom, but this is kind of interesting having the sink butt up to that live edge and you get that book matched effect. That, that's an interesting look, I, I dig that. That's a fun idea. And this is why you do these visual researches. You never really know what's gonna come up. And sometimes you land on an idea that's not right for this project, but could be right for a future one. But we don't give up hope, we trudge forward because something will come of it if we just stick at it. We're not looking for a finished idea, we're looking for a seed of an idea. Okay, okay. Now, this is interesting. This is not good, I don't think. I shouldn't say that. I don't mean that as a value judgment. This is not my aesthetic. This is not, I think, a refined design. I think this is very rough. I think it's intentionally rough but it's the seed of an idea that I'm looking for. So that could be something. It could be something. I don't know how that terminates into a wall that's at an angle just yet on that left-hand side, but that goes somewhere. So I think maybe now is the time to take that idea and play with it a little bit. See if I can't come up with something interesting. Okay, all right, all right. You know what? Look, is it perfect? No. Will it function? Yes. This is the skeleton of an idea. Do I think I could make this interesting by adding details, by being very particular about the grain selection? Yeah, I think there is room to play here to make this piece more interesting. From a skeletal perspective, I think this is the start of a thing. Which brings me to my third step just start already. At some point, you have to get past critiquing your own design and just start fabricating the thing. Don't be afraid to make a thing that's perfectly average. Do I think this piece is gonna be world-beating gallery worthy? Absolutely not. It's a bathroom cabinet and that's okay. It doesn't have to be the best thing you ever made every time you make a thing. Now understanding, I'm going to be making this piece in a shed. I've got a Ryobi chop saw, I've got a contractor saw, I've got a lunchbox planer, and I've got a wall full of green tools. I'm going to be limited. So if I were again to design this piece to be a gallery piece, I would only make myself miserable. You have to work within the limitations that you have. And I think the piece that I have an outline for could very well be made in this space. So don't get stuck, don't get caught up in this, well, the design isn't good enough yet. 
it's in my experience, I've never had a design where I was like, oh, this is going to be incredible. Concept and reality are inherently different. So step three, just start making the bloody thing. Now, I'm going to do the build in a separate video because I still need to go get materials for this, which I think could be an interesting video in and of itself. But I do want to touch on step four because it's vitally important. And step four is do not build and critique at the same time. Critique is helpful. Critique is important. Being able to objectively step back and observe your work, figuring out what's working and what's not working, that is a valuable skill set to develop. However, the creative process and the critiquing process are separate processes. So step four, create, don't critique. Now, often when I'm working for a client, I give these ideas time to percolate, to grow, space in which to develop, which I'm not going to do here because of the limitations that we have. But I do just want to acknowledge that is a part of my process under most circumstances. In this case, we're going to trudge forward and we're going to figure it out as we go, which brings me to the last point about my process, which is I only go so far as to give myself a direction, a path a way to move forward. I create a skeleton on which I can add all of the details as I'm creating. That's how I find I make my best work. You may be different. You may want to have all of the details in place, and that's totally fine. But I would encourage you to make some decisions on the fly next time you make an object. Change an edge detail. Change a corner. Round over a corner. Make a corner sharp. Figure out how you can manipulate the grain in order to create an effect. Play with something and take an aesthetic risk in that regard, and that may open you up to more down the road. But that's just me being a teacher. For right now, I need to go to a lumberyard and get material for this. So let me know if you want me to make that video in the comments below. And friends, until next time, I appreciate you being here, and I hope that you get a chance to get in the shop and go make a thing and go enjoy the process as you do it. Oh, and thanks to Mike Coffee for being a sponsor of this video, if only spiritually. He's a good man. Maybe go check him out. And until next time, friends, cheers.